Hello, my name is Nicoleta Mitra. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Transylvania from Brasov, Romania, the Faculty of Medicine, Nursing Division. On behalf of the Erasmus Plus Project RESPAC, I will present the justification step from the research flowchart that you have already got familiarized from the previous videos that you've watched. This justification steps, step is the fourth in a row in the flow chart, and it looks at several questions that you need to think about when going deeply into your research. The questions are why to do this research and why now? What gaps in knowledge will be addressed? Who will be benefiting from the research that you are conducting? In order to, answer, to better answer these questions and to better clarify for you uh, this justification step in the research flowchart, I would like to dive you in together with you um, into the small example that have been chosen uh, in this regard. Um, I will talk a little bit about the research uh, behind the justification step that I would like to get into more detail. And uh, the research that uh, we decided to run was looking at the way in which is better recommended to place the butterfly used for subcutaneous administration when administering injectable opioid in patients suffering from cancer. And this positioning, this better positioning of the subcutaneous butterfly was looking actually at the edge of the needle of this butterfly, the more particularly how to better position the 45 degree cutting of the edge of the needle with this cutting facing down the muscle or with this cutting edge facing up the, uh, the skin, so the derma epiderma. In, uh, in undergraduate education, when becoming a nurse, the regular uh, way of positioning the butterfly, uh, it's you know, to help you go into the vein, to help you go into the subcutaneous tissue. So the edge of the needle will be uh, facing up this 45 degree cutting, not down. Uh, when we started the services, the inpatient unit in Hospice Casa Speranza in Brasov, Romania, we were having mentors from United Kingdom visiting us and helping us uh, with, with delivering uh, quality palliative care. And one of the advices that were given to us referred to the better positioning of the butterfly, not as we've learned in the nursing schools. So with the 45 degree cutting of the edge of the butterfly needle facing up. Okay, so these mentors of ours uh, recommended us to position the butterfly uh, with the edge uh, of the needle the 45 degree cutting facing down towards the muscle. And uh, in this beginning stage, we didn't ask many questions uh, from our mentors in regard to the recommendations they were making. We were looking up to them, we were trusting them. So we didn't uh, um, challenge, let's say the, the process that they were advising us to implement. Yet we, when we became mentors to new young nurses, 
coming and working together with us in the inpatient unit, they were challenging us with the question, why position this cutting edge of the needle of the butterfly in this way and not as we've learned in the nursing school? So we consider this to be a good place to start a research in order to clarify how it is better, not only for these new nurses that were asking the question, but also for us, which were already doing it in this way for, for some time. And uh, as, as the, the reasoning why we were taught like this was given to us as by positioning it into this way, you can, the butterfly uh, will be positioned in the uh, chosen location for a longer time. And um, also local complications will not arise uh, so uh, so often and with with a high uh, intensity. So we said let's let's look into more depth into this uh, uh, situation and let's uh, for the future have our practice in this regard uh, based on evidence. So we we proceeded. So this is like the overview of the research. And as a method, we, we were doing a prospective experimental piloting study. And uh, we, we had two uh, groups of patients to which we positioned the butterfly uh, with the edge of the needle facing up. And uh, half of the group of patients uh, in our uh, caseload uh, the edge of the needle, the cutting of the edge of the needle was placed facing down. So um, we, we had the hypothesis that there is a significant positive relation between the frequency of injectable opioid administration and the occurrence of local complication, respectively a negative relation between the occurrence of this uh, um, of this complication. And also we want to establish uh, for how many days the butterfly will be um, staying at the place of choice uh, given the complications, if this complication will arise or not. So justification, why to do this research and why now? So we said it's important to have our clinical practice uh, um, proven to be the right one and proving it to be the right one by running a, a, a research. So to be evidence-based. So this is the, the reason why to do this. So we were doing it like this, but we felt like there is no evidence behind our practice. And why now? We were still at the beginning of the inpatient unit services. So we said it's important to go uh, from the beginning with, uh, with this um, research and, and uh, establish good, uh, good practice. What gaps in knowledge will be addressed? We will understand better uh, also um, why to position in a certain way, which will be the uh, advisable length of stay of the butterfly at the insertion place and which will be the complications that we will avoid by uh, performing the technique in this way. Now, in regard to who will be benefiting from the research, first of all, we were thinking uh, the nurses will be the ones benefiting, but actually when going deep, yes, it will, the research will answer some doubts that we were having, but actually when going deeply into the uh, process, we realized that first of all, the patients, 
will be the beneficiaries of our research and as important as the patient, there were families. And I will explain a little bit uh, more about this a little bit later. And why patients will be benefiting? Because on one hand, when positioned the cutting of the edge of the butterfly, of the needle of the butterfly facing the muscle, we realize that the butterfly can be, uh, can be kept at the place of insertion for more days than uh, we usually used to keep it compared to the group that had a, a cutting of the edge of the needle of the butterfly facing up. So it was obvious that the length of stay uh, was more in, uh, in this case. And of course, the, com the complications that will appear locally, which were very important for the well-being of the patients, um, in order for them to have peace of mind in regard to this butterfly uh, that was uh, sticked to their skin and uh, um, the anxiety level which appeared together with the uh, um, local complications. Uh, so we will avoid this, uh, this situation. And we realized that when facing the muscle, uh, the complications like in duration, redness and bleeding appeared uh, in the study group uh, in very few cases compared to the control group. So we proved that this is a huge benefit for the patients to, to have by doing it in this advisable way. Also, who will be beneficiaries? I said, yes, the length of stay, and I've mentioned also families um, or key, key carers. When, when we provide our services at home, um, we realize that we uh, place our trust in, in the families and we have them in, as partners in the process of care. And we also trust them with our knowledges and with some of the skills that we as nurses perform when caring for the patients. One of the skills that we've, we continuously learn family members, key carers to perform is to administer subcutaneously injectable medication directed our symptom control. And we've realized that by doing this study in the inpatient unit, we actually managed to change the practice in the uh, home care services also. And the, the nurses in the home care services will teach now uh, key carers at home this way of, uh, of administering with and giving them the reassurance that it is okay to have the butterfly uh, implemented for some time, for a few more days in place, as long as local complications do not appear. So now we, we knew how to give more uh, more information, which we were explaining that it is evidence-based uh, practice that we also have, uh, have become aware of after uh, performing this study. As a conclusion, it is confirmed, it was confirmed that administration of pain medication via subcutaneous butterfly by family members is safe practice. And we also um, emphasized again 
the fact that patients, family members, key carers, and nurses are all beneficiaries of this research. Thank you. I hope it was helpful in, for you in the process of going through the flowchart. Uh, at the end, I must mention that there will be this video and uh, other videos, which all of them are part of uh, the materials that are developed by Erasmus Plus Project RISPAC uh, Research for All Palliative Care Clinicians. Goodbye.